The cannabis industry has been on fire since the U.S. election, mostly driven by hopes of federal legalization under a Democratic administration. One of my own investments, Afria, has gone parabolic and is up over 170% since I posted a video analysis on it in November. The link is in the description if you want to check that out. But in this video, I want to talk about a different stock that I also think has tremendous long-term potential. Hexo Corporation, ticker symbol HEXO, on the NYSE and Toronto Stock Exchange, is a much smaller company than Afria currently sitting at about a $900 billion market cap, or $1.14 billion Canadian. They're currently the fourth largest cannabis company in Canada by net sales, and they are growing faster than the industry, taking market share from competitors. Despite this, the company is trading at a significant discount relative to their competition. Currently, Hexo is priced at 7.72 forward EV to revenue, which is pretty much the lowest of any of the Canadian cannabis producers, besides a few much smaller growers that are much more risky. In my opinion, the entire industry is probably quite overvalued at the moment, but I also think that Hexo deserves to trade at a similar if not higher multiple than companies like Canopy, Sundial, and Organigram. It certainly should be trading higher than Aurora, whose growth is virtually dried up, much like their cannabis. Hexo's balance sheet is also one of the best in the industry, with no shortage of cash and liquidity, and very little debt. Besides Afria, I also think that they are the closest to profitability out of any of the major cannabis producers. In the current market environment, we've seen a huge amount of hype around cannabis stocks, and I think many investors are simply flooding into the big, well-known names. This also explains why Tilray has significantly outperformed Afria, despite the fact that they will become a merged single entity. But over time, fundamentals and real tangible results will determine the winners and losers of this industry. I've mentioned this before, but I actually work in the Canadian cannabis industry, uh, and I feel this gives me some pretty good insights. Pretty much on a daily basis, I get to talk to cannabis producers, retailers, and consumers. This helps me cut through all the hype, marketing, and noise to get a clear picture of the real trends developing in the industry. I also want to preface this video by saying that this is not financial advice. Investing always carries risk, and investing in the cannabis industry carries even more risk. I personally will only be allocating a few percent of my portfolio to this industry, with the vast majority of my portfolio being in much safer, more stable investments. However, I do still believe that the cannabis industry represents a great long-term opportunity, as long as you can pick the right companies. Along with the broader cannabis industry, Hexo has performed incredibly well recently, already doubling since the start of 2021, though it has pulled back a little in the last few days. Unlike Afria though, Hexo is still way off its all-time highs, though much of that gap is a result of shareholder dilution. Shares outstanding have ballooned from about 50 million to 120 million, an increase of 168% over the past two years. In the past, lack of profitability and the inevitable need to raise capital have been factors that have made me shy away from investing in Hexo. But I really like the recent actions I've seen from management, and their product portfolio has grown into something truly impressive over the last 12 months, so much so that I would rate them best in class in both beverages and the all-important high THC value segment for dried flour. The company has made great strides towards profitability over the last several quarters, all while maintaining huge top-line growth rates as well as expanding and streamlining distribution and operations. I think that 2021 could be the first year that this company turns a profit, at least on an adjusted basis on the bottom line. This would be huge, as they would no longer have to raise capital through issuing shares or debt, and the business can become self-funding. Unlike some Canadian cannabis producers, Hexo's top line growth has actually accelerated every single quarter in 2020, and I believe this growth is going to continue into 2021, especially with their recent relaunch of the Up Cannabis brand, and their continued market share expansion in the cannabis beverage market, and their distribution facility, uh, which was newly finished and should eliminate a lot of supply chain inefficiencies that have plagued many cannabis companies. 
Analysts currently have them growing at 69% in 2021, which I think might actually be a little bit conservative based on the opportunities I see for them this year. I wouldn't be surprised to see this revenue number coming closer to $140 million. Now in this video, I want to focus on three main things. Hexo's product portfolio, profitability, and their strength in the domestic market as well as potential expansion in the U.S. First, I want to go over their product portfolio in a bit more detail, because this is the main reason that I am bullish on Hexo long term. I believe that building great brands that consumers trust is vitally important for the long term success of CPG companies. Right now, the market is still very young and there are a plethora of competing companies and brands, but over time, only the strongest companies with the best brands will survive. And I think Hexo is well positioned to be one of those long-term winners. In Flower, I want to focus on their original stash line and the newly relaunched Up20 brand. Both these products occupy important market segments, consistently delivering high-quality, high-THC product at prices similar to competitors and lower in many cases, especially considering the quality they are able to deliver. I think Original Stash is going to become a very valuable brand going forward. Consistency of quality is extremely important for CPG companies and especially cannabis companies. And Original Stash has already built a lot of trust with consumers by consistently delivering on their promise of high potency, high quality product at black market prices. Many other brands have failed to do this, either through inconsistent strength levels, batches of poor quality product, or simply failing to produce enough to stay on the shelves every week. It's also very important to note that Hexo was a first mover in the large format value segment. When Original Stash first launched, there were no real competitors, and this has led to them grabbing significant market share already. Up20 was just relaunched, and I think it is going to really contribute to Hexo's growth over this next quarter. This is a more premium, slightly higher priced brand, but is still very competitive and is priced similarly to other companies' mid-market products. This brand promises to deliver over 20% THC on every batch, which is something that most consumers want and very few companies are able to provide consistently. As I mentioned, Hexo has been a price leader in dried flour, and in vapes as well, which has helped them gain market share over the last year. They have managed to do this while maintaining healthy gross margins, and management is targeting 40-45% to gross margins long term. This is really great to see because it means that even as they are reducing the average selling price per gram, they are reducing the production cost just as fast if not faster. Management has repeatedly talked about waging a war on COGS, or cost of goods sold, by utilizing automation and optimizing their growth cycle. By reducing the cost to produce their product, they are able to lower prices and pass on value to consumers while maintaining healthy margins. In beverages and hash, they already have the number one market share position in Canada, and I think that beverages are going to be a massive opportunity for Hexo going forward. From what I've seen on the ground, demand for Hexo's beverages appears to be growing as more consumers try out their products and find out that they like them. In my opinion, beverages could become the most important part of Hexo's portfolio long term. Currently, they only account for about 1.5% of the market, but Hexo believes it could grow to 15%, and Molson Coors is even more bullish, predicting 20-30% to market share over time. There's a lot of key information to discuss when it comes to beverages and why this segment is so important, so pay close attention to this next part. Edibles as a whole are popular for obvious reasons. A lot of people don't like to smoke, and eating or drinking something can be a much more fun, casual experience for the average consumer. One issue with traditional edibles like gummies or cookies is the onset time. It can take upwards of 1-2 to two hours to start feeling the effects from these products. This can be fine in some situations, but can also present a bit of an issue. Imagine you go out for a drink with your friends, or you have a beer in the evening to relax. Now imagine it took 1-2 to two hours to feel any kind of effects from this. 
Cannabis beverages solve this through technological innovation. Companies like Hexo are able to infuse beverages with very tiny particles that are more easily absorbed when consumed. They can kick in as fast as 15 minutes, making them a much more viable and appealing alternative to your average consumer. A lot of companies are experimenting in this area, in particular Canopy Growth and Tilray. Hexo is currently winning this category with number one market share, but no company has yet managed to fully establish their brand presence. There are no Coca-Colas or Pepsis in this industry yet, but I think Hexo is potentially the most likely long-term candidate to fill that role. Hexo's beverages are produced by a company called Truss, formed in a joint venture between Hexo and Molson Coors, the largest U.S. Uh, public alcohol brewer. Currently, they operate under Hexo's license, and Hexo reports their numbers in their financial filings. But soon, they will obtain their own LP status and operate as a separate entity with its own corporate structure, though still mainly producing out of Hexo's Belleville facility. At that point, as I understand it, Hexo will simply report their share of Truss's earnings as pure profit on their income statement, and I believe they have a little over a 40% ownership stake. This partnership with Molson Coors is, in my opinion, invaluable. First, it shows Hexo can strike good, mutually beneficial deals with multinational CPG companies, which will be required to fuel future expansion abroad. It provides Hexo access to all of Molson Coors' beverage-related expertise, as well as an easy method of expansion into the U.S. and international markets through Molson's supply chains, infrastructure, and existing relationships with retailers and consumers. As of their December earnings, they had already begun producing and distributing CBD beverages in Colorado, so it will be interesting to hear about progress on that front in their next earnings report. Long term, there is likely to be a huge opportunity to expand into THC beverages in the U.S. as well, depending, of course, on the regulatory environment. What feedback I have heard from consumers regarding Hexo's beverages have been overwhelmingly positive. In particular, their Molo brand, which is a hops-based beverage meant to essentially fill a very similar role to beer, with a similar taste profile and appearance but using THC and CBD instead of alcohol. I have also heard good things about their XMG and Little Victory brands, which are more similar to sparkling juice or spritzers. The sentiment seems to be echoed online as Hexo's products consistently seem to be the most popular. Now this is entirely anecdotal and a very small sample size, but this Reddit poll posted in the BC Cannabis Store subreddit also had Hexo voted as the overwhelming favorite. This gives me a lot of confidence that the company is able to produce products that people like, and potentially with mass appeal, that could eventually dominate the Canadian market and even be leveraged internationally. The fact that Canada was the first major country to legalize has given Hexo a huge head start in terms of developing products and partnerships so that they will be in a position to hit the ground running, while other companies are still scrambling after US legalization hits. Hexo also has a presence in the vape market, though I won't dive into that too deeply today. Suffice it to say their vapor products are competitively priced, good quality, and seem to be relatively popular, though the space is very saturated with competing companies at the moment. Moving on now to the financials, profitability is a major concern across the cannabis industry, and Hexo has been no exception, having taken losses on the bottom line for every single quarter they have been in operation. As a result, they have had to issue more shares to fund their operations, and have diluted shareholders massively over the last two years. It is important to note, however, that the losses aren't actually as bad as they appear on a gap basis. A significant portion of losses this year are a result of one-time, non-cash impairment charges, write-downs on assets, and fair value adjustments on biological assets. Hexo's management has been aggressively targeting profitability by streamlining their operations and cutting costs. After listening to their conference call, it's clear that management understands that they have to become profitable as soon as possible and they've been reducing operating expenses, 
and have significantly lowered their production cost per gram through improved efficiency and automation. They have managed to improve adjusted EBITDA for the past six consecutive quarters, and 2021 looks like it might be the first year they finally turn a profit on an adjusted EBITDA basis. Management has been targeting positive adjusted EBITDA by first half 2021. I think that might be a little optimistic, but we shall see. Hexo's balance sheet is also quite solid with $150 million in cash, only $56 million in long-term debt, and $137 million in total liabilities. The company is certainly not at any risk of bankruptcy and shouldn't even really need to raise any capital over the next year so long as they continue to tighten their margins and don't make any major acquisitions. This is definitely one of the better balance sheets I've seen in the industry. Hexo has done a lot to clean it up this year, and the company is now in a pretty healthy financial position. The last thing I want to quickly touch on regarding Hexo is the company's strong domestic presence. Hexo is based out of Quebec, the third largest Canadian province for recreational cannabis sales, and in their home province they have a dominant 29% market share. Not only that, but they have a preferential relationship with the provincial government, including a multi-year agreement to supply the province with product. They even run distribution for online sales in the province. This means that a significant percentage of Hexo's production volume will be purchased by the Quebec government over the next few years, essentially guaranteeing a portion of Hexo's future revenues and giving them a solid base to rely on. With a well-established foothold in Quebec and a more robust supply chain in place, Hexo is now looking to expand more aggressively in other provinces. As of Q1 2021, they had achieved third position in market share for Alberta, and sixth in Ontario, which are the two largest provinces for cannabis sales. Going forward, I expect them to slowly gain more market share outside of Quebec, and especially in beverages. To summarize, there is certainly a degree of risk that comes with investing in Hexo, but considering their lower valuation relative to their peers and the long-term potential I see for their products and brands, I think the risk is worth it. I will personally be adding to my position over the coming months at anything under $10 Canadian. If the stock gets closer to $8, I will begin adding more aggressively, and around $5 is where I would fully build a position in this company. I'm looking to hold Hexo for at least the next 3-5 to five years, as I think it will take some time for the trends in the cannabis markets to fully develop. I want to thank you all for watching the video today, and I hope you got some value out of it. Let me know what you think about Hexo stock and the cannabis industry in general. I do plan to upload more regularly this year, so look out for new videos soon. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss them when they come out. I'll catch you guys in the next video.